Blanca. Hi, Ali. Hello, everybody listening. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Sondra and Salt, the weekly food podcast about the, the magic, magic of, of eating. eating. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I like your hair. Oh, thanks. 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 It's a little bit different. It's a different look today. Yeah, you I know. Like it. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'm actually hungry. I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten yet either. So once we finish this bad boy, yeah. <laughs> it's time for lunch. There's been episodes where we've spoken in depth about things that I've wanted to go and eat afterwards, mm-hmm. but I haven't been hungry. So today's going to be an interesting one. If this podcast gets you going and makes you hungry and makes you want mm-hmm. things, makes you crave things, it means you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying it, don't forget to leave a rating and review on Apple and Spotify. You can click where the stars are on the Spotify thing or scroll right down to the bottom of the page on Apple and then leave us a little paragraph. Yeah. That's not what you're thinking. Five stars. Five stars is preferred and only Five expected. stars is mandatory. <laughs> I don't know what Harley's talking about. <laughs> Five star reviews only. We really, really appreciate them and they really do help with the reach of this podcast. Yeah. It's funny you say about if this podcast makes you hungry because last, like, was it last week or so that we saw each other? And we put up a clip about Turkish food and then we had Turkish food like two <laughs> days later. <laughs> we, <did. laughs> we actually did. And Literally. we had that. And that experience was that we said to the guy on the menu, it said couscous. Yeah. And I was like, couscous? I was like, come on. I don't think so. Yeah. And he came over and I said, it's couscous or it's bulgur? He was like, yeah, 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 it's bulgur. I was like, yeah, give me some yeah. of that. <laughs> Run me that. I don't know couscous here in a Turkish restaurant. But what is your food highlight of the week? Right. My food highlight of the week is a little bit different. Oh. So uh, last episode, I did mention that I'm getting my life back. Mm-hmm. Going back to more prepping and planning. You did. So I'm not really a big snacker. I don't really snack. It's something mm. that I just kind of, a habit that I really tried to kill many years ago. But you know, sometimes get a little bit peckish. Oh, I'm a snacker. So yeah, I know you're a big snacker. <laughs> I know. I live to snack. So on my meal plan, I have allocated some dark chocolate mm-hmm. times. When I'm craving a little bit of sweetness. Yeah. yeah. And so I popped into Sainsbury's recently. And to be honest, I'll be so real. It was the packaging that got me again. <laughs> the packaging that got me. I was looking for a dark chocolate, but I didn't just want 70% dark chocolate with no flavor. I like the sea salt one. I don't mind it, but I was looking for something with like a, that sounded like a little bit sweet little to me. Genesic. Little Genesis I one. like the green and blacks with the ginger bits in it, Ooh, but I yeah. think it's about 65%. Yeah. So I didn't go with that. I ended up picking up this brand called Who. It's Who Back to Human Dark Chocolates. And if I'm being honest, I don't know. The branding itself doesn't necessarily grab me. Okay. But the taste of the chocolate is actually really nice. I bought a bar from Sainsbury's. Had a little bit of a um, quality issue on mm-hmm. it. Dropped a little complaint. Yeah. Sent, yeah, I sent them a message. I was a little bit upset because I couldn't finish the bar. Right. So I sent them an email and I told them what happened. And they sent me a box of four. Mm. And then they sent me a box of four. I actually bought the cashew butter and pure vanilla mm. flavor. They've got quite a few. They've got salty. They've got crunchy mint, simple dark chocolate, vanilla crunch, cashew butter and orange, cashew butter and Ooh. raspberry. Cashew butter and orange. And a hazel me. butter, hazelnut butter one, almond butter and crispy quinoa. I just went for the cashew butter and pure vanilla so that's what they resent me, mm. but uh, a multi pack, and it's just nice. It doesn't have too much of a bitter taste. There's a smoothness to the mm. chocolate. It's these like squares, and in the middle, you've got like this almond butter, probably mm. vanilla paste in the middle, and it's encased in dark chocolate. So I actually bought your bar today, sweetheart. So you can try it. You've been trying to call me out last couple of episodes that I never bring you anything. So you I've got one in my bag, but yeah, it was quite nice. It's called. Who is like H U, and their mission is obsessively vet every ingredient to unite unbeatable taste with unmatched simplicity. We help people get back to human. Yeah, I would buy it. It's definitely a bit more expensive. I believe it was three pound fifty wow. for the bar. Yeah. After all that talk on shrinkflation, you're out here buying three pound fifty bars of chocolate. I deserved a treat that day. If oh, I'm being completely honest, right. so I did. I did pick it up. Um, this is how they get you. Yeah, exactly. This is how they get you. Yeah. Well, my food highlight of the week, you were actually there, but you didn't indulge Mm because you were doing all of this who chocolate stuff. Yeah. But we went to the launch of East Winds, the book by Rias Phillips. It's a new book. No, I was avoiding gluten. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. You said all this dark chocolate stuff. Yeah, you was on this who, this this who (laughs) who stuff that you're doing. Whatever. Because there were doubles provided at, the book launch because the book launch is um recipes from the hidden caribbean is the tagline of the book the recipes are mixed 
heritage, I guess, from around the eastern islands of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. But the doubles were very, what is the word? Free flowing, let's just say. Oh yeah, they had loads. <laughs> they had Kylie loads. had loads. <laughs> well, well, you had my portion as well. I had ho- oh yeah, I, you, you told me to finish it. You were yeah, like, you finish not? it, there's only one left. So doubles, for anybody who doesn't know, are basically two flatbreads, the barra. Yeah. And then chana, which is a curried chickpea. And then a little pickle kind of cucumbery relish. Like relish almost. Yeah, yeah. It's in, all the recipes are in the book for every single element of this. And, then and like also tamarind. the tamarind sauce. Mm. Which I first became like proper aware of tamarind and the flavour of tamarind in Thai food. So, oh really? Yeah, when it pops up, I'm just like, it's just, I don't know, something a little bit nostalgic about it because I did like a cooking course in Thailand. And I was like, yeah. oh, like I remember tasting this like for the first time and it being like, whoa, like I grew up eating tamarind. You can get these little um, I probably preserved tamarind balls. And yeah, you know, like the and they're full of sugar and like crusty. Yeah, and it's got the little seed in the middle. I love that. So my I dad probably, used to make tamarind juice. I probably did because when I had the experiences with my mom and she was like, it's tamarind. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know what you it know is. What it is. <laughs> Stop <laughs> acting out. And I was like, no, I've but seen good is it before. Is it because it, it was used differently? I think so, but okay. something about the flavour of it anyway. So I just really liked that kind of little, the little mm. zing, that little kind of dressing. Yeah. Um, I actually really like the way doubles look. I don't know. I think it's something about the diagonalness of it all. Like the doubles lay one way, the the china is what kind of technicality I is don't this? know I like the way doubles look I really 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 I, do I love the texture of doubles I yeah. like that the, the barrel the flatbread is quite soft and spongy yeah. and then you've got like the chickpeas which sometimes they cook quite soft but chickpeas have a slight crunch on the exterior to them crunch it's not a crunch That's but a it's, a, it's I know it's not a crunch I, just, I like crunchy things in it <laughs> yeah. but it's a it's a bite it's a bite, yeah. it's a bite. exactly yeah a mouthfeel if you haven't listened to our episode yeah. on flavor all our episodes are linked on sonorasalt.com or you can have a scroll through we go through all the elements and mouthfeel is one of them so yeah. there's a few things about doubles we like them we like the way it looks it pleases a lot of our senses yeah. to be like the actual colors because it's a few different colors although it's yellow it's, yeah that yellow stands out mm-hmm. the tamarind stands out the lightness of the bread it's wet the bread is dry the chicken the flavor is just bite. banging the it's, flavor is yeah, banging. It's, it's banging and there's obviously for both of us for different reasons i know you've eaten them a lot in like america and well we trinidad when i went to, to trinidad carnival oh, yeah, and we ate doubles every doubles, doubles doubles that's all we ate well but for both of us there's yeah. like also a nostalgic element even if it's just down to one part of it mm-hmm. like the tamarind or whether it's going to Trinidad or whatever so when we um on the day of actual carnival the day like where you're crossing across the line they gave us doubles for breakfast and I just remember being in my my whole outfit had my whole carnival outfit on my costume um, and we were just walking down the road eating doubles at seven o'clock in the morning that sounds like a dream <laughs> it was so fun that sounds like I a loved dream it. amazing experience well, those are our food highlights of the week. We mm-hmm. will reshare pictures of them on the stories. But if you want to see them as they happen, as we did share this, both of these things throughout the week, follow us on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Make sure you're following Sunder and Salt on Instagram. And then both of our Instagrams are linked on that. And we'll be in the show notes of this episode. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about today then? We're talking about rice. 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 There's that famous old saying, mm. there's rice at home. Yes. Um, when your parents don't want to buy you that little that little McDonald's or that little nice treat and they're quick to tell you that there's rice at home. Yep. I think rice is one of those food products yeah. that are cross-cultural. Very. <laughs> global. Very. And everybody has a story about the time when they couldn't get the niceness that they wanted out of the road because, because there was their parents rice. said there was rice at home. <laughs> so rice. How much do you think you know about rice? I thought I knew quite a bit about yeah. rice. But then when I found out that there's over 40,000 different <laughs> varieties of rice, I realised that what I think I know is a small drop in the ocean. Yeah. And it's very much dictated by where I live in the world and my cultural heritage, the type of rice that I eat and the types of rice that I'm exposed to. So yeah. I don't think I know that, <laughs> that much. That much about know. rice. So rice, as I'm sure everybody knows, is grown different types of rice around the world. Mm-hmm. But r- the conditions that rice needs to grow are basically hot and wet yeah rice paddy gro- fields r- rice grows in paddy fields like wet yeah and that the conditions for that are commonly in areas of asia on the, across the asian continent i was about to say well, so why don't we grow rice in the uk but you said hot <laughs> didn't you yeah because <laughs> it's wet here but also you think there's a landmass that they're not putting a block of flats on and it's let so us, true right there's there's no <laughs> way can just there's just about space for the cows yeah, for that good old british beef yeah 
<laughs> potatoes and beef is uh, all we can churn out. But yeah, rice, a lot of rice comes from, a lot of rice that we eat in this country anyway, comes from um, across the Asian continent. And there, as you said, are over 40,000 types of rice, varieties of rice. And they are, there are more. Like, yeah. they're, they're making more. Crossbreeding more. Crossbreeding more. Some because of, like our preferences and yeah. the way things are going but also some because of the climate yeah yeah to make them more resistant make them more resistant yeah. make, maybe we can start growing rice in Liverpool soon I don't know like maybe find little Cotswold rice Cotswold rice soon reach <laughs> if they manage to be like? to crossbreed a rice that could grow in other conditions because the conditions of the planet are changing mm-hmm. of those 40,000 types of rice yeah. how many can you name so basmati rice yeah long grain rice Long grain, yeah? Um, I'll partially accept. Why? Because rice seems to have, from my research, it has three structures. And yeah. long grain is a structure. So there, okay. is long, there are long grain rices, there are medium grain rices, and there are short grain rices. The long grain rice I'm talking about is the dead bullet rice. <laughs> the cheap, easy cooked long grain. It's literally called, called long, long grain, grain rice. Okay. That's the one I'm long talking about. Long grain white about. rice, yeah. yeah. Jasmine rice. Yes. Um, short grain um, risotto rice. Yes. Which is, is it? Ab, ab, there are a few types of risotto, yeah. Like, Arab, Arabath, Arab, I know that's, the one you You're mean, talking yeah. about the pasta sauce, but it's like Aborio or something. Aborio, and there's another one. We're saying it with confidence. I don't know yeah. if it's Aborio. <laughs> but there's a short grain basmati rice. I know some of my Nigerian friends, mm-hmm. they have something called a fada rice. I don't okay. think I've ever had that before. Right. I'm not confident about its structure or anything like that. Um, and then broken rice as well. Okay. Well, actually, that's not that's a type not of a rice. rice. That's a cooking. That's, that's yeah. That is a um, secondary product. Yeah. And it's just broken rice. But I know they they use that a lot in like Senegal or Gambia yeah. to cook their jollof, those types of mm. places. And then yes, yeah, sorry, wild rice. I need wild that one rice, as yeah. well. Brown rice, but that's again uh, technicality. Technicality. Yeah. yeah. Red rice. Yes. Black rice. Black rice. Well. Yeah. Uh, glutinous rice, which is sort yeah. of sticky rice, basically, which has nothing to do with gluten, but we can talk about that. Yeah, that used to throw me off, but it's just, it's, um, because it's, it's so absorbent. stodgy, yeah, it, it creates a glutinous texture. Structure, basically, yeah. yeah. That's it, really. Oh, sushi Which, rice? Oh, okay, yeah, sushi rice. And there's probably many types sh- sushi of sushi rice. rice is a short grain rice. Yes, it's a short okay. grain rice. It's very, it's almost round. I think yeah. sushi rice is almost round. I think good sushi rice, like actual authentic sushi rice, is almost round. I find when you get sushi, if you do, from like supermarkets mm-hmm. and those places, the structure of the rice grain doesn't feel as authentic. I feel like it feel, feels a little bit longer than when I've had it at Hot Stone, which right. is some of the best sushi You've ever I had. have had oh. in London. Yeah, really good. Okay, so those are a few that we can think of to provide. There are more. We've done the research. So we've read, there are 40,000. Yeah, we've read a few more times. <laughs> now we're just on the spot. We can't remember any of them. But of the technicalities then, so the brown rice and the white rice and why there's so many different types mm-hmm. and what the cooking and kind of differences are so the brown rices are well rice as a whole is a grain that grows and it's in a husk yes and the husk has to be removed in order to find the bit that we eat yeah and then the bit that we eat that's underneath the husk is called the bran and those are the brown rices so brown rices still have the bran on them so Mm -hmm. it's like one degree separated from how it was actually on the plant the husk is gone and we're still eating the bran and And the bran has the fiber the bran has the fiber yeah the brand can then be removed and that's underneath what we find is all the different white rices. Mm-hmm. So when we cook brown rice, it takes longer because it, you're cooking through, yeah, that fibrous coating and it's like literally an extra layer on the rice. Mm-hmm. Um, I also find that brown rice is bigger probably because it has probably that, little, that little extra layer. Not, yeah, not necessarily when you see it in the bag, but when you see it all puffed up. When it's all cooked, it's a little bit, little bit, she's a little bit thicker. You think so? I think she's a little. Thicker. I feel like when I have the brown rice, the basmati brown rice. Yeah, like like rice type for rice type, brown basmati versus brown white. I think brown rice is just a bit chunkier. She's, she's thick. Okay, I don't I think like I've it. ever really noticed, but I do tend to eat more brown rice because of that fibrous coating. Mm. I do find brown rice more filling. Yeah, and more satiating. Yeah, so definitely. So generally, if I'm gonna cook rice at home. <laughs> no pun intended, then it will be brown basmati rice. My dad has always preached that brown rice was better, but he never really told me why. Mm-hmm. And now that I probably understand it, there's yeah. literally fibre in the the brown yeah. rice that's not in the white rice. But yeah, I remember one day we had an argument about rice. It's the same logic to <laughs> me as seen. brown bread versus white bread and brown bread being more nutritious because brown bread has the husk. 
No, it's not. No, I don't think that's the same. Because Why? white flour is bleached. But white flour... White has rice the... is just naked. No, but white flour still has grains that have the husk removed. Yes. Yes. So there is a, a higher degree of fiber and nutritional value in brown bread versus bleached white bread part of the bleaching process is to yeah but it's just not the same no but it's a similar logic the fact that brown bread i don't like that comparison why because the white rice is was always in there it's just naked the it's not like process not ultra process it's just it is still process it's process yeah but it's not the level of processing but it's processed but it's not the level of process that makes the difference between white bread and brown bread what do you mean? Like brown bread versus yeah. white bread is not just about the wheats. It's not just about the flours. The ultra process of, of yeah. white bread. White bread is also way more full of sugar. Yeah, but at the same time, brown bread has more nutritional value than white bread. Yeah, I because there is an I element disagree, missing. But I'm saying yeah. I it's not the same comparison. I no, but it's a similar dangerous. logic. Similar, yeah. but not If the you're going to have bread, it, like the degree of bread that you should have is, but if you're going to have bread white bread is the worst thing that you can have exactly but that yeah. doesn't necessarily apply to rice that logic there doesn't apply to white rice it does not no i don't think that's true because it there's does. literally data about the healthiest people in the world and how the japanese are the healthiest people in the world and how much white rice they yeah. consume so there's, it's not the same logic between if you look at the americans who eat but, white bread the, and but white that's not because they eat foods. just white rice only it's, it's their overall diet but what as a single entity but if you brown rice out, is still more new uh, brown rice is still more nutritious than white rice. I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. I'm saying that the yeah. comparison is not the same. You can't compare yeah. the healthy the, the healthiness difference between eating brown and white rice yeah. as a difference between eating brown and white bread. I think you can. We're going to agree to disagree. Yeah. That's, that, but that's just not true. It's not true Why about not true? bread. Because the reason that brown bread is brown is not for the same reason that brown rice okay, is, is brown. See. That is brown bread brown. Because brown brown bread, as we buy yeah. in the supermarket, is white bread with some brown in it. If you're going to eat bread, you're encouraged to eat brown bread because it's whole grain and it has that fibrous content. If you're going to eat rice, the general consensus is brown rice is deemed healthier or more nutritious. Asian people clearly are an anomaly and that's a whole different thing that we can talk about. But that is the general consensus that it is better for you. So do you think, moving on, move, yeah. moving on with this, past this, do you think then that the communities, or how many, and we don't have necessarily the facts or the figures for this, but meals of cult- countries and cultures around the world, mm. do we know that actually kind of live off or make meals of, and we're going to talk about a few meals around the world as well, out of brown rice. Like white rice is the, is the majority yeah. leading rice around the world, mm-hmm. right? And if it's cheaper, which I think I saw somewhere to, it, well, white rice is cheaper. In, super, yeah. in the supermarket, white rice is cheaper. So it's probably why. But it's probably cheaper because they sell the husks to do other things, maybe. Don't know. There's, I'm speculating. Because you, there's still a, you still have to, there's a process to remove it. So then how, it's a costly make, process. Yeah, so what makes it cheaper is probably the money you can make from the husk. Don't know. Or is what you said before about, um, I can't remember what, and I always said so many things, about the scale. Maybe processes that processes of scale mm. allow for economies of scale, economies of scale yeah, maybe. to come up and down. But I just can't think of any. And again, there are forty thousand types of rice, and yeah. however many millions or billions of people, like national dishes or like yeah. standard dishes in restaurants or whatever mm-hmm. that are brown rice driven. In my yeah. head, it's like you go to a couple of there's like a couple of I don't know street food places like box food places or whatever, yeah. and it will stand out that oh we do brown rice. Yeah, I th- I think the reason why we're encouraged to eat more brown rice or like brown things is because it's only one way of increasing your fiber intake and there's multiple other ways through vegetables and everything else. And I think in Western society, the balance of the diet is not there. So I think in other areas of the world where they're eating white rice, there isn't the, there isn't the need or the pressure for it to be brown because I think they're probably healthier overall because their di- their diets are just generally balanced. So the white rice, white rice still has some kind of value. Yeah. It's still like carbs or starch or whatever else. And they also, uh, well, it depends on which part of the world, but in places like Asia, the amount of rice that they will eat with a meal apparently Versus is not, other, like, yeah, it, it's not excessive. Carby yeah. starches. And, and they still eat um, a good amount of like protein, a lot of fish, um, a lot of vegetables so I don't think there doesn't I don't think there really is a lot of places 
like you said, that actually consume brown rice as a staple part of their diet. Brown rice seems to be something that has been popularized over this side. I don't know. There's nowhere that I know that really eats brown rice. That's, yeah, like, let us know on Instagram or wherever you find us if you are from a community or a yeah. culture because we have over 80 countries listening to this podcast. Someone is going to be like, listen to this saying, I, eat, I only <laughs> eat brown rice. We only eat brown rice. And there are communities like that. So let us know because it's not just... It's not an ignorance of us. We have we have done research yeah. with episodes and stuff. So let us know. Be interested because I prefer the back to flavor and taste and mm-hmm. mouthfeel. I have a better flavor experience yeah. of brown rice generally, but there are some things that I want right white rice yes. for. But that's me. Sorry, talking about I should be more specific. Brown basmati and brown <laughs> easy um, long cooked. Yeah, brown easy cooked long grain rice. And I'm, I'm wondering then, so say for example, are all white rices available in brown? From what I'm hearing and understanding, you cannot grow white rice. Yeah. <clears throat> you grow rice, you remove the bran, and it is then white rice. So rice as a grain will always have the bran. It will come in a husk and it will have a bran. I, ac- <laughs> I just tried to Google, are all white rices available in brown? And I accidentally wrote, are all white races available in brown? <laughs> And now it's like the first thing. Oh my Google god! Is, about racism. <laughs> the first Google is how to be brown. Is it tan? <clears throat> no, it says can you code switch? Can you call yourself Jesus. brown? <laughs> we can leave this in. The reason I'm asking that is that what we know as red rice, yeah, that's the brown, right? Or is that? Do you think? Do you think, think the that's the brand. inside rice is red? I don't know. You know, and that the brown because that black rice. How does that? How does that grow? Is it, has it got a black bran? And then the black rice inside? Is the black rice that we eat? Yeah, is the black rice the bran bit? Basically, it's all rice white inside. That's what I want to know. Black bran layers are not removed from the rice during processing, so the rice does not stick together when cooked. So it makes me think that with red red rice as well, that they leave the bran on. And it's the bran. Because a lot of those, like, I use the word very loosely, natural rices mm. they don't tend to they don't seem to cook uh, very easily no and they don't seem to like stick together or if they do you have to you have to cook it in a particular way to develop that glutinous type of structure yeah. with the right amount of water and boil it for the right amount of time so another thing that they do to rice yeah. which i forgot about was um polish they polish rice that is that why at one point there was like this speculation of like um plastic rice. I remember that. Yeah, plastic. I remember ra- plas- that. People are like they're selling plastic rice in bags. I remember so. that. I think I'm um, and from I watched a Epicurious video. I think it was Epicurious, maybe Bon Appetit, and um basically it's one of the structures of rice. Or I say one. I keep saying one like it's not forty thousand. <laughs> Some of the structures of rice go yeah. ragged. Like when you cook, the actual grain is a little. Yeah. She's a little ragged. That's an unpolished, unpolished oh, rice. Oh, I see. Whereas, like, the rice that stays a smooth husk even when boiled. Yeah. Obviously, once you overcook rice, it ends up a little bit raggedy. It's all puffed up. Yeah. But it's this polished grain of rice. But when, you, do you know if that polishing structure has, is a chemical process or it's more like it's the rubbing of the rice to smooth it down? Because that changes the game. If I'm eating chemical, I mean, everything is has got some element of chemical in it to, to clean it during the manufacturing process. But from my very limited research of not many of the 40,000 types of rice, it is a physical process. Mm-hmm. Um, they have vertical rice polishing machines, okay. which can literally polish the rice. And there's also a video here, which I'll link below of manual polishing of rice, like in the Himalayas. I knew he was going to say Himalayas. In the Himalayas. I actually knew he was going to say Himalayas. Up with the Sherpas. Yeah. And um, it strips off the layer, it strips off a layer of the grain and decreases its nutritional value at a significant level. So they take the bran off. So white they rice. They take the husk. Sorry. <laughs> they take the husk. Well, the husk we can't, we can't, we can't consume. Us. They take the bran off. Yes. Then they polish it. At least, yes. Uh, yeah. And then what's left is like the lowest nutritional value. And then we value. boil it. Yeah. So, gosh. Rice. Rice is vibes, is what it's sounding like. Like white white rice. But I love white rice. Well, I was just about to say, let's 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 move on. But yes, there are many types of rice. There are many colours of rice, structures of rice, and ways that people around the world eat rice. Some of the ways that we do know people eat rice around the mm-hmm. world, as we've said, majority white rice grains from what we understand. Some of my favourites are paella. Mm-hmm. Paella. 
Um, uh, do you know? Oh, paella. Mm, I don't mind it. Do you like the crispy bits? Because I love the crispy bits. It's okay. I I had funnily enough, I had paella in Spain, mm. and I didn't love it. Um, and I came back and I was tweeting about it, and a lot of people. <laughs> Huh? Did you get cattle? No, I just said that. Oh. I, I just didn't enjoy it as much. But I, when I had it, I think in London, mm. I enjoyed it more. And funnily enough, quite a few people were saying that, obviously, depending on where you go in Spain, yeah. it's just not the best place to yeah. get paella. And yeah. I think that's probably an impact of um, tourism sometimes. There's a few places like Venice. They say the food in Venice is crap. and it's Oh, really? Yeah, appar- apparently. That's what I've heard. I watched a documentary on Netflix that was exploring the food in Venice. I think it may have been somebody feed Phil. Oh yeah, and he went. Yeah, and they were talking about even like the Venetian people were just talking about how because of the influx of tourism and mm. kind of bending to what tourists want, the food quality in Venice just went into the bin and it just wasn't very good. So I wonder if there's elements of that in the Spanish yeah. community where paella is just made an on mass as they say um, and it's just not as not as good i don't know but i went to where did i even go i can't remember i agree with you because i've had paella a few places ab- around spain and i would say that in number one they always make it that you can't have it for one yeah yeah so it's a big pan you gotta have a big pan or at least for two you gotta mm. have it at least for two which i think helps them well, I always thought it's like, okay, cool. It's because you're making it really well. It's like, it's got to have a certain stock and mm-hmm. seasoning or whatever. And you don't want to make it for one. But I agree with you. I've had some whack paella in like Barcelona. Some yeah. of the paella was rubbish. And I'm like, I've heard amazing things about paella here. Mm-hmm. Madrid, I don't even think we really bothered because we looked at it and we were like, I just don't think that's yeah. But then Mallorca, like, like full on tourist Mallorca. It was good. It was good. It was amazing. I think that's where I was, but I went to like the old town. There was a restaurant that we went to. They recommended it at the hotel. And it, I wouldn't say it was bad. Yeah. It just wasn't giving. It just wasn't giving. There's was... that too. And I think the reason, well, I'm someone who likes to eat pork and seafood. And mm-hmm. that's like a lot of what's in paella. Mm-hmm. So I think a seafront paella to me is always going to be better. Like on an island, on a Spanish mm-hmm. island, Madrid, I was like, mm. Doesn't really because it's landlocked. Landlocked, they? and I don't know. Maybe it's just a vibe. Maybe it goes back down to flavor in terms of what can I see, what can I smell, what what, what am I doing here? Can I eat it? Can I see the sea? Yeah. Like especially when it's not my cult, like it's not my culture. Maybe I've just romanticized in my head. Well, that's what I had to tell myself. What the experience of paella is supposed to be, and like you see it in all these amazing movies, and you're like, oh, yeah. the crunch and the crisp, and you see it on Netflix, and it's like when they scrape it, and mm-hmm. it's got those crispy. But sometimes I've gone to the bottom paella, and it's just so sticky it's at just, all. Yeah, I, I did wonder if it's just not for me because I'm always conscious that when I taste something, okay, if it this may very well be the authentic dish. Yeah, it just yeah. might not be for me. And so There's I did, I think my argument on Twitter was that I don't think it's for me mm. because when I've had it and I had it in Spain, I didn't love it. And it was a, quite a few people that came back and a couple of people that said they were of, of Spanish heritage that said it's not necessarily the best place, funnily yeah. enough, to try paella. You're better wonder... off going into a home. Well, uh, always. Uh, yeah. Always. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's why I missed out. But in Borough Market, I do like that one. I the paella the one, that yeah. they, they sell right by like the, the, the fishmongers yeah. on the corner. That one was nice. It's not as wet. I find sometimes it's a bit yeah. dry, but I it tastes good. I wonder if your relationship with paella or maybe your expectation of paella is also linked to your like um, taste of pork. Like what you, because it's, well, from my experience, it's yeah. a pork broth or a chorizo broth. Yeah, or, yeah. So, I don't know. But Maybe. other rice dishes around the world, let me know what your vibes mm. are on these. I happen to love a biryani. I do. I do like I biryani. biryani. I do like biryani. Do you know, one thing I will say is rice dishes. I like rice, but I don't like to eat a huge amount of rice. So, I like a biryani. I can't relate. Really, I don't. <laughs> like a plate full of rice. Can't just doesn't do it for me um so i do like the fla- i do like the flavor of a biryani but it's not something it's not that i would e- i would never really order it because i'm only gonna have a little bit of it yeah and then i would like like a the curry or something that was one thing i'm gonna talk about all time one thing i loved about mm. the jishun biryani they don't have it on the menu anymore the lamb biryani because yeah. it was a meal like it had chunks of lamb in mm-hmm. the biryani and um, veg like green beans all the stuff in it whereas when you get a biryani from a takeaway mm-hmm. 
you order the biryani and you get veg curry on the side and yogurt. Like it's mm-hmm. a it's a rice, but it doesn't necessarily have meat or stuff in it. You can get a chicken biryani, you can get whatever yeah. you think for be honest. But there's really like packing like I don't need to order anything else okay. with this. Hmm. But I agree with you that even just we'll get to a few others, but certain rice dishes, I'm like and it's just a lot the the, the ratio. The ratio, yeah. Like, and but I can do paya, I can do risotto. I do like a good risotto. I do like a good risotto, like just creamy, cheesy, mushroom risotto. Is there much else in risotto though? Like scale in terms of what you said about biryani and, or do you like it really full of bits? Um, It's probably because when I have risotto, it's quite a small portion Mm -hmm. and I will have like salad on the side or I don't really have like a big plate for, if you can get a risotto starter, yeah. then I might opt for that because it's just a small amount of rice. It's, do you know what it is? I think some of this is because rice to me is so filled with carbs that <laughs> for the for more years than I can remember, I just don't like to eat too much rice. I prefer to eat more meat and vegetables. So rice forward dishes. Yeah. It's not something that I tend to gravitate towards to, even like a bowl of fried rice. Yeah. I like a bit, but I like rice with a bunch of salad and some meat. If you're new here and you haven't listened to season two, episode two, which is toxic diet culture and our relationship with food. <laughs> <laughs> I just hear... feel like you're calling me out. No, no, like, it was both of us. Yeah, we both yeah, spoke yeah. about that, but just yeah. not to rub it on about it now, but we we have a whole episode about like how our relationship with food has changed over the years and yeah, like periods yeah. of our life when we fell in love with certain food groups and then fell out of love with certain food groups and how that's mm-hmm. left where we are right now. To be honest, we should probably do an update of that because the last year has even been yeah, another whole mate, I'm telling you. The gluten journey and all yeah. sorts of things. But um, you just reminded me when you said start a risotto, arancini. Oh, you love an arancini oh. ball. You love an arancini ball. Yeah, it, see, again, it's not something that I would... So... I'll let you finish your I'm list. Oh. But, yeah, I'll let you finish your list. But I think for me, I like products made with rice. So let's let's jump along the list. Yeah. There's rice and peas on this list. Oh, well, <laughs> well, don't know if I've said this before, guys, but I'm very much a rice and peas with gunga peas type of babe. So I, I like rice and peas, but the pea is more important to me than the rice because I find that the pea lends the flavour and I like the flavour of gunga peas. I'm not a red peas kidney bean type of babe really mental so but i do like and this is how i know it's the it's the peas that i love because my mum she knows that i don't really like red peas so she will boil the peas make the peas water and then take the peas out and boil the white rice or the brown rice in the peas water and i like that so it's rice and peas flavored rice yeah 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 i love it and it's just without the 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 jumble in my mouth of red peas. I just find them overwhelming. But if it's gunga peas, fantastic. I love it. Another thing on my list that you have experience of and have spoken about, but mm. I don't, is the Hyannese. Um, Hyannese chicken Hyannese rice. Hyannese chicken rice. Yeah. You really Hyannese enjoy chicken. that. I love that. So it's poached chicken mm-hmm. and the chicken is poached and it creates a stock and then the rice is cooked in the chicken stock. So the description I have of it is um, from Singapore, Malaysia, mm-hmm. popular Southeast Asian dish where poached chicken and aromatic rice yeah. are served with a chili sauce and ginger paste. Yeah, I love that. It's a very simple dish. It's a very simple. So the, the quality of the chicken is super important important the stock that you make when poaching the chicken is really important the rice of course because it's aromatic rice and then the rice is boiled in the chicken stock yeah but when you have like good Hainanese chicken rice and it's like don't know if they say this everywhere but in a lot of places it's labeled Hainanese chicken rice okay and the rice like you could just eat the rice because there's so much flavor in the rice just separately oh it's so good a Mediterranean, Middle Eastern type of rice, um, well, rice dish, should I say, is dolma. And dolma is dolmades, the mm-hmm. little vine-wrapped yeah, yeah, rice yeah. leaves. And they can be vegetarian. A lot of places that do them, like M&S Deli ones, mm-hmm. are vegetarian. So they're just like mint mint rice in the yeah. vine wrap. They put leaves. mints in them sometimes. Don't they? Yeah, they put lamb mints in yeah. them sometimes. Or just any meat um, across the Mediterranean. Like Mediterranean flavours are quite similar, but obviously between the different regions. Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll have like parsley, um, different sea. Like, but I love... Cumin? Po- possibly. Mm-hmm. Like on the more Middle Eastern side, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, a good tough dig. A good oh, pot bottom. Good pot bottom rice. Oh my gosh. Some of my favourite videos on um TikTok. There's I think it's an Iranian family that I've ended up following. Yeah. But it's probably the son that runs the TikTok. 
it's the grandma. Like, I don't know. She must be four foot five. Yeah, she's four flipping the five, pot. Flipping the pot. Like, <laughs> the whole Dutch pot, like, on top of the thing. And then she just waits. And then she kind of listens. Mm-hmm. And then she lifts the pot. And it's just the most Perfect. glorious, like, that Persian crispy bottom They use a bit rice. of saffron. Yeah, I used to love when my mum would make um plain rice, that or like mm. boiled white, white rice, rice to have with saltfish and cabbage or whatever, curry chicken, and then you'd cook the rice and add butter at the last minute mm. and it would seep to the bottom and create like a, a crust. I used to love that. But I just again <laughs> season two, episode two, when you say <laughs> toxic diet culture. I don't put butter in my rice anymore. But if I'm making like perfect white rice and this is purely for enjoyment, yeah. then salt is going in there. Probably a little bit of oil and butter to finish. Yeah. All the fats and it's just mwah, fantastic. We'll get on talking rice in just a second. Just one more rice dish I wanted to throw out, which is a very wet rice dish. And it's mm. not one that I really enjoy, but I think similar hmm. to you and Paya, I don't think I've had it right yet. What's this? Jambalaya. I don't think I've had a jambalaya. I had one in New Orleans. Yeah. New Orleans. I've also had one in kind of, you know, like Blue's Kitchen. Yeah, like yeah. Like places in the UK that have like American soul food, whatever kind of vibe. I've had it in New York as well at Red Rooster. Oh, okay. Yeah, Red yeah. Rooster? That's yeah. the restaurant, right? That doesn't exist in London anymore, does it? No, it, it was in down. Shoreditch. Yeah. I went, for bir- I went for a birthday once, actually. Mm. Um, Yeah, Red Rooster. I think I had jambalaya. I had a lot of good stuff at Red Rooster. The first time mm. I had grits as well. That's story for another day. Um, I just don't know. It was kind of just like salty wet. Really? It's not hitting. What is, what is jambalaya? Jambalaya is a one pot dish from the American South mm-hmm. combining rice with a mix of proteins like chicken, sausage and seafood as well as vegetables and Cajun spices. I've, okay, I thought it was like Cajun. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. that kind of thing but it's almost like it's, it's almost rice in gravy. Okay. Like the rice is inside the gravy. The gravy is the majority. The Let wet. me see. Is it almost like, um, yeah, I guess in New Orleans, not, what's gumbo? Is it similar to gumbo or or drier than gumbo? Because gumbo is it's the, drier the stew than, drier that, is, than that comes with rice, isn't it's it? It's drier than gumbo. Okay. I think I had gumbo once in New Orleans, but I remember it being another one that was kind of like served too and I was there by myself and the seafood boils. Sorry for another day. Um, is white rice in a yeah. brown liquid. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, this is, I can. there's two things going on here. Mm-hmm. But I think jambalaya is, is too one pot it's to be that wet dish. to me. Okay, okay no. one, one more, one more. <laughs> a plate of rice that I can just eat by itself. Yeah. I don't really, just because of how it comes into my life more mm-hmm. often, is jollof rice. Yeah, I like, like, jollof, I like jollof rice. I could just eat jollof rice. It is that kind of dish. I see people online talking about, oh, jollof rice is better than rice and peas. I think they're very different dishes. I wouldn't, that to me is it's not comparable. Than, no. Yeah, it's not comparable because I guess they are kind of like side dishes, but there's just so much that goes into jollof rice. I think it definitely can be eaten on its, on own. its own. Yeah. Are you eating it with um, long grain or basmati? Um, I don't discriminate. Really? You know what it is? I don't really cook it. Okay. I, I cook it. I have cooked it. Um, and I think one of the things I really liked about when I cooked it was I used Dope Ario's recipe. I think mm-hmm. I've mentioned before from her book, Hibiscus, and it includes ginger, which apparently is not it's in not everyone's jollof. Yeah, I love ginger. I love ginger. Rice. Yeah, so yeah, when I, I make it. it, I do really enjoy the flavour of what I make, but the... It's, <laughs> what it's, I make? <laughs> yeah, but in terms of like, it's a it's a laborious process that I'm not a pro of, whereby yeah. if I go somewhere and they have it, I'm not going to be like, oh no, that's yeah. basmati. I'm going to be like, hey, bring that thing over here that I can't bother to cook. <laughs> bring that thing over yeah. here that I don't even have a pot big enough to, to, to cook. Because I think yeah. there's, well, people say there's like party jollof. Yeah, where it's smoked. Like, it's kind of like smoky jollof. There's, yeah. There's, I mean, we'll, I think jollof has a, could have an episode on its own. We need a guest. Oh, for sure. We need a couple yeah. guests. <laughs> because he does the best. I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I, you know I, what? I don't yeah. care. Like I said, um, I need someone to provide the jollof that I don't have to cook. Yeah. And if you want me to be a taste tester while we continue the diaspora war. <laughs> what I've realized I love is Nigerian style, like the Nigerian stew base, the jollof right. stew base yeah. with the basmati rice, which basmati rice, from what I've been told, is very it's much not. more of a Ghanaian thing to do. That sounds so like... That is my perfect jollof rice is Nigerian vibes yeah. with Ghanaian rice choices that sounds like a bit of me and then if i have to i'm gonna want plantain 
um, one pound coin planting. <laughs> nope, give me the slant. To be no, okay, but to yeah. be honest, I would want plants, fire planting, long slants planting, and I would want um, chicken. Yeah, I like beef stew on the sides. Yeah, yeah, or fried chicken. I'm not really into the jerk and jollof thing. It's a bit too much for my palate. It's od. I find good jollof rice quite potent in its yeah. flavor, and so I need something quite simple, simple. or similar in terms of like stew like a tomato based stew on the side so those are a lot of different rice dishes around the world mm-hmm. which all have very specific cooking methods to you know get the end result but let's just talk about rice plain boring rice yeah just rice what are the basic principles of cooking rice i think for me some of the the key principles when cooking rice the first one, and this is not negotiable, I think, is to wash the rice. I don't think it's, um, it's not necessarily about cleanliness per se, mm-hmm. if, if you think that it's clean enough, but it's about removing that additional starch. starch. And so if you want to cook good rice, mm. rinsing the rice off is definitely a step that you want to take. So whether it splashes, it's, it's not chicken, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But you'd be doing yourself a disservice by just, yeah. you can actually... You can actually taste the excessive starch. I've, I've had rice before that has not been rinsed and I can taste it. And you can see at the top of the rice where all that starch is kind of gathered, like gathered at the top. Yeah. yeah, and you can just taste it. It just, it tastes dusty. So yeah. I definitely say rinse your rice and you want to rinse it. I rinse my rice in a sieve. sieve. I think people that are rinsing in a bowl and pouring it off. Girl. You like hard work. I didn't know how to cook rice for a long time. Yeah. I would cook rice. I was cooking rice. Mm-hmm. I was just not cooking it well. Were you one of those people that were like boiling the rice and water and then pouring off the excess water? Uh, no, because that's easy cooked rice. So easy cooked rice is like that, but I was trying to cook basmati rice. Cause Have you cooked really easy cooked rice before? Is that is that actually how it's yeah, designed? Yeah, easy cooked rice is like pasta. Cool, blam. I actually never knew that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no. how you cook easy cooked rice. And you also, there's no, there's no real ratios. Just make sure there's enough water. Yeah. Because you're going to pour it off. Really? Yeah. It's actually designed like that. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Easy cook rice. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, easy cook rice, I grew up eating, but then by the time I started to learn to cook rice, we were eating mm-hmm. basmati rice. So there's only basmati rice in the house. So I would be trying to cook it and yeah. cooking it badly. Okay. Either it was under, whether it was over. Sometimes the water cook out, but the rice is not cooked. Trying it's to add crunch. cold water yeah. to, the, to, the, to the hot pan of rice, all this kind of stuff. So I, there was a time, 100% yeah. in my learning to cook rice process, that I was washing out rice like trying to wash it just in the pan. By the time I then tried to make the ratio of the water work, half the rice is down the drain. Yeah, dead. No. It's terrible. And then I think I saw a video one time of like uh, how to cook, cook rice, and the lady was just washing the rice and talking like this. Yeah, in the sieve with a sieve. That's what I do. I'm I'm like, why am I washing it in a bowl, pouring it back. off? Half of it is down the drain. Yeah. Like you said, it's just stressful. When I wash it in a sieve, you can see when the water starts to run clear. You're good to go. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I can just mix it around and get out any little dodgy little bit grains of rice grains. And, yeah okay so the rice is washed mm-hmm. does rice or which rices require soaking some rices do i if i'm having brown rice i will soak it when i first started cooking brown rice this is when i lived in america and i was like really trying to be like super health conscious Were you living in la uh, yeah uh i was but no don't worry where <laughs> i lived it was nowhere to write home about <laughs> i was in ohio and i was like okay i'm gonna get into eating brown rice and I can cook white rice. I'd grown up cooking white rice. Cooked it exactly the same way. I was eating concrete bullets. <laughs> like I was, I just couldn't understand. And it was just on Raw. the, fu- it was just, it, it had dried out. I yeah, knew that there was yeah. enough water. And yeah. I was like, but this stuff is hard. Mm. So I soak my brown rice. I use Tilda brown basmati now. Yeah, and I, I find that. that if I soak it for like 30 minutes max, it just makes it even softer. I like very fluffy, soft rice and it cooks quicker. You said you don't soak I don't soak my brown rice. I just cook it lower, or not lower necessarily, mm-hmm. but I just cook it. Let it steam cooked. for longer. Yeah, let it steam for yeah. longer. And with brown rice as well, I will find that my method of cooking with brown rice is always put the rice on mm-hmm. and then the rice will be done while I'm making curry or whatever. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'll let it steam longer. Whereas white rice to me, sometimes I'm like, I'll start cooking and then I'll just, oh, I'll just throw the rice on now. Because it's going it to so cook so quickly. Whatever, once, so. The, once the water dries out, it's good yeah, to go. I think the yeah. process of me cooking rice um, for brown rice, I always factor in in my head. I just tell myself it's going to take three hours. 
What? It doesn't. But I'm just saying, I give <laughs> myself so much time. You that might as well soak that bad boy. Three hours. I just don't remember. I'm yeah. not, this is the same, we've had a conversation before about the freezer. I'm not someone who like thinks far enough ahead of my meals yeah. that if I put stuff in the freezer, I'm going to remember to get it out on time to cook it. <laughs> the duck. The Holly's, duck is Holly's in duck. the for days. I still have taken it out. But if it's, yeah, if I'm like, oh, in oh, an hour, I should take out the rice to soak the rice before yeah. I need to cook the rice. I'm not going to do it. Do you know, if you <laughs> soak your brown rice though, I don't know like how effective this actually is, but I know on YouTube there was that whole thing about brown rice water for hair um, retention Both, and growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum did it for a Pe- while. Yeah, does it does it work? Uh, no. Right, fair enough. Well, it didn't it didn't <laughs> work for her, but yeah. also you have to be careful because um, like the amount that you make and the amount mm. that you use, uh, the rice water goes mouldy. Yeah, it's f- fermenting. It's fermenting. It's fermenting. So just yeah. if you're one of those people, just be careful. You only have to make as much as you want to use. Yeah. If you make rice a lot, then you get. It I fresh. thought about it one time when I soaked my brown rice, and then I just thought I can't be bothered with it. There's probably a benefit, but again, the system yeah. of my life. The day I want to wash my hair, I need to wash it now. Now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Am I collecting rice water just in case? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Oh, I sh- could or should be washed. Yeah. It could or should be soaked. Mm-hmm. What are the principles? Well, they say to make sure you use the right pot. I tend to use like a saucepan. I've got, the thing is, I can't tell you what pot exactly, but you tend to know if you cook enough rice, rice pot. what pot to yeah. use to cook the rice well. And so once you've got your your pot and you t- you want something, I don't think it needs to be nonstick, but there are some pots that just burn things. Yeah, <laughs> I've got two. yeah there's some pots that just they just burn things. Yeah. And I think it's if it's like a stainless steel pot that you don't know how to handle, then you might get a lot of the rice stuck around the yeah. sides. So you want to make sure that you've got a good pot. Tends to be a saucepan for me. Yeah, I will link my tried and tested. Yeah. It's a Le Creuset pan. It is nonstick, mm-hmm. um, but it's heavy. Mm-hmm. So it takes a little while to warm up. It distributes the heat evenly. I think yeah. that's important for cooking rice. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you want to make sure that you're using the right amount of water to rice. So typically, I tend to go for a two to one ratio, two cups of water to one cup of rice. But again, it depends on the rice that you are cooking. So... If you're cooking a specific variety of rice for the first time, you might want to do a little bit of research because mm-hmm. some require less or more water. Um, but for everyday cooking, like basmati rice, I tend to go for a two to one ratio. Two cups. And this is like actual measuring cups that you get. Off. <laughs> this is not like a teacup. But then at the same time, as long as, you're, as long as you're using the same thing for both the water and the rice, then you're measuring it equally. Yeah. So you want to use two to one or 1.5. Some yeah. people like a little 1.5. A little texture. I like my rice very soft and fluffy. Yeah. Some people, not putty. So I don't want it to cook soft and turn into porridge, but I like it soft and, and fluffy. I don't I don't like it like super separate. I do like a, a like very a slight amount. Rice. Yeah, it's very slight amount I of stodge. Like if you rice. were to put it, you know when everyone was doing like, um, when they serve the rice in a cup, yeah. And it will hold together. Yeah, it's not yeah, going to yeah. fall apart. That's how I like it. I like soft rice. I mean, I, I like all rice. But um, I do like my rice with a little bit more bite for certain meals mm-hmm. and not for others. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Mm. I think um, when it comes to measuring the the right amount of water for your rice, some people like to do the, the finger the finger in the middle type of method. I have never understood it. Do you know? I, I was, don't get it. I was raised to cook rice without putting my finger in but you just you just see like the rice should be submerged mm. and you just want like just a little bit on the top that was very much how i was told so there is no like accurate measure yeah. i find it's just easier for me i like to measure I things like to measure it so i just use the two to one ratio and leave it at that when to me I don't scientifically it. i find it hard to get my head around because our finger lengths are different so how is your finger versus my finger an accurate representation I think I think it's and this is me speculating I think people have learned it your way in terms of they know what it's supposed to look and feel like to their their finger finger. yeah so initially their their mum would have put the rice and the water and been like put your finger in there like see the difference see the height see how it's supposed to be but I have never yeah I've never got it and also I don't understand people go to other people's houses or like can make can just be like oh yeah I've turned up here's your pot that's perfect rice me if I don't have my pot Really? And my rice. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's why I prefer to measure it. Because yeah. then I can make rice whenever and wherever I want. At my parents' house, like, in my teens, when my dad was trying to teach me to cook rice, he has 
what you said about cups. Mm-hmm. There's the rice. The mug. rice cup. Yeah. The rice cup. It's a mug. It's just a mug. Yeah. But that's the rice mug. And there's even scratches in the mug of where like, oh yeah, the left scratch is for like one person. The right scratch is for really? two people. Like, they just measures in my dad's head that yeah. he knows. Oh yeah, when I made loads of rice that time, I filled the cup up to the brim. Mm-hmm. When it's just me and you, I just fill yeah. the cup up to like the handle. That's the thing. Because when it comes to like the water part of rice cooking, that's not a problem for me. No. My issue is the What's amount of rice. Yeah, the amount of rice. Like, because the rice swells. Yeah. As it's cooking, the rice grain swells. So I'm always looking at it and I'm like, it just doesn't look. One cup, that's not enough. And then it's cooked and I'm like, the he's going to eat. All- yeah, so I've kind of trained my mind to know that one cup of uncooked rice is two cups of cooked rice. Right. And I only eat around half a cup of cooked, cooked rice, rice at a time. Yeah. So I only need one cup. And it looks small in the pot, but yeah. it will swell and it will cook. So it'll be fine. You mentioned salt, oil, butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to start my basmati rice with oil and sometimes a little shallot. Okay. Just a little, a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little I do like that. little onion or a little shallot. Okay. There's certain rices that I'll cook where I'll put the flavor in the bottom as well. So say like if I'm adding cumin seeds, I'll mm-hmm. like toast them in that oil with the shallot first. If I'm mm-hmm. doing like an Indian curry and I want that kind of rice or like mustard seeds or something in the oil of the yeah. of the rice of the oil sorry before I add in the rice and cook the rice butter I don't really butter some people stock so I like yeah I like what if I'm making like a good pot of rice when I do actually have like white rice basmati. to go something mm. it typically is going to be basmati rice and this is just this to me is like the plainest rice that I want to eat and I will saute some shallots and maybe a little bit of garlic in olive oil yeah and then I add chicken stock and then I cook the rice like that. And mm, I, I love that. Yeah. Chicken stock, rice cooked in chicken stock, I think is really nice. Yeah, I agree. I think it kind of depends on what, it's, what I'm going for. Because there's rices that I've done, nine times out of ten, I cook mm-hmm. the rice, not as plain as possible, but plain. Just salt, a uh, little oil, a little shallot to yeah. go. Because my issue with portion control is that I'm always trying to turn the rest of the rice into something else. Oh, okay. And if it already tastes too much of yeah. one thing, it's kind of like it's confined. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. this week I did a batch of brown rice and yeah, I had it with like some heat up bowls for a couple of days and then I managed to turn the plain rice into yeah. fried rice or this, that and other. So I think if I'm going to make, like you can't really turn jollof into anything else because you cook the flavour in. I mean, you could probably do like a jollof fried rice, but it will you wouldn't be able to, it would just be an extension of that original, of original dish. Rice, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be able to like revamp it into something and it tastes like a whole new dish. What about salt? So obviously if you've used a stock, yeah. like a pre-made stock, it already will contain salt. So just double check that if you're buying a supermarket stock. Yeah. People, well, we, everybody should be salting your pasta water quite liberally, quite heavily. Yeah. What's the vibe of rice? I salt my, my water mm. for rice. I think, um, if you, I mean, if you want to be like super like low soul, health conscious type of thing, then you can, it, it's not going to affect the texture mm. or the outcome per se by I'm not cooking, adding salt. Yeah. But if I'm cooking rice, I still want the rice. And I think rice has a, a pretty nice flavor. The salt will bring that out. So I like to add salt to the water when my rice is boiling. Same. Yeah. I, that's the bare minimum to me. Even if I'm not going to like fry off any shallots or something, I'm just cooking up. Just salt. Yeah. At least salt, yeah. And I also would say that we have an episode all about salt. Salt and the curse of all pepper seasoning. Yeah. When you're cooking something like rice or when I am, I just like to use like fine salt. Like mm-hmm. I have a Himalayan salt grinder now actually. So that kind of salt, but using like molding or crunch, that's not, it's that's not, not what it's made for. It's not, it's not a finishing <laughs> salt kind of dish. I know we like to use we love to salt bay things. Yeah. But to be honest, when you're cooking rice, because you want it to distribute evenly in the water and through the rice, you just yeah. want something that's fine. And milled, absorb easily. Absorb easily, dissolve yeah. it into the water. If you salt your rice at the end or the beginning or whatever, if you're mm-hmm. making basmati rice where you don't mix up the rice again, mm-hmm. the place where the salt landed is might be where it landed. That's it, yeah. And you'll get like these pops <laughs> of salt. Yeah, these yeah. pops of salt, which is not very enjoyable. So you said also about steaming the rice. I just like to boil my rice out until the water is yeah gone and then turn the heat off leave the lid closed and let it kind of finish off while yeah. i'm doing whatever i'm doing when i'm cooking the rice it will be boiling on a moderately high heat once the water has reached like a low level or it looks like to the naked eye that it has basically dried Boom, out yeah i turn it all the way down and then i leave it to steam until the rice gets to a desired texture because i find that once the water's dried out the rice has absorbed it 
but it hasn't steamed and fl- it's not fluffy yeah. in the way that I like. So the steaming process allows it to be fluffy. I grew up putting a layer of foil I was just about or to ask. cling film over yeah. it. I think ultimately tea what towel? that is, I never really used a tea towel and I definitely wasn't allowed to use a plastic bag. I know some people yeah, use that, yeah, but I yeah, think that's I a probably a bit that. OD, like hygienically. Yeah, <laughs> you can use cling film if you're going to do that. I think ultimately that's an act of trying to trap in as much of the steam as possible. Yeah. And like... I think with a good pot, with a good lid. Exactly. If you've got a good, good pot and a good lid, you probably don't need to do it. Yeah. However, I will say a lot of these pots have got that little eye hole <laughs> that lets out some of the steam mm. and you're trying to trap as much steam as possible to allow it to get really fluffy. So I do still put a layer of cling film over the pot lid and pop it back on just to let it steam off. Sometimes what I do when that, if I use that pot, which is yeah. my smaller pot, I put the, the wooden spoon, I rest the wooden spoon oh, right the on the top. so that it blocks the hole. <laughs> a bit it still comes up because you'll hear yeah. it like, like it's shaking. vibrating. <laughs> it doesn't have a steam outlet. But um, yeah. I did the foil thing once. You know, I'll tell you now because like I said, I had some real tragedies. The tea towel one is good if you actually are trying to draw out the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are trying to draw out the water because tea towel will absorb it. Mm-hmm. So if you if your rice is cooked but your rice is still bit too wet mm-hmm. i'll put the tea towel on well i can't remember how many times i did this i've done it in a while mm-hmm. i'm all right now guys <laughs> put the tea towel on like in one spot of it mm-hmm. leave it for a couple of minutes and then move so the is lid. this onto the actual rice no just over the top of the oh, pot okay. and then put the lid back on top yeah and that circle that's been exposed is now full of liquid oh, really? and it would drop the moisture and then i'll pull the tea towel along and get a new dry patch and really? that will pull up the steam yeah oh, okay i did see a video online that if you've um, added too much water to your rice, if you put a potato yeah, in there, I've then potatoes are, absorb moisture, so the potato will draw out all of the extra yeah, moisture. I've heard that too. I think once you've gone over a certain threshold, it's soft, you're, it's, right? yeah, yeah, you're done for. That's as it. As long as your rice, well, I have eaten many a pot of rice like that because it was edible. It's what, when like the rice, rice is, pudding rice? Not that bad. Okay. But it's when the rice is under that you just need to probably. No, but if it's under, you can still save it. You just have to... Keep, yeah, as long as uh, you're still cooking it. Yeah, 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 it's true. Well, I mean, once, <laughs> once it's, you if you're taking it, it off, it's true. But yeah, if it's but under, you just need to add a bit, a little bit at a time because you can put over. in, but you can't take out. So just want to add in a bit of water at a time until it gets to the desired fluffiness. That you want, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's rice. We probably will share a couple of resources about how to do other types of rice, like cooking coconut rice or oh, cooking, yeah. like, cooking rice and peas. Like, I mean, yeah. I have some videos up on our channel. We'll leave them linked. One last point on cooking of rice is rice cookers. Yes. I've never had one. I have. Thoughts, feelings? Um, There was a time where during my like growing up period where my parents would actively use the rice cooker. Okay. Um, I think it's efficient. Some people call it lazy. I know how to cook rice without a rice cooker. Yeah. I don't need to. I don't need to put it on a pot. I don't have one now mm. just because it's an extra appliance that takes up space. But I think rice cookers are great. I think they're a little bit restrictive in the sense that if you want to add any Jenny say Quan to your rice cooking yeah. process, you've got to do it separately and then put it into the rice cooker. So you're using two appliances uh, as opposed to one. So you couldn't like put the stock in the... Um, I, I wouldn't saute my onions and oh, all that kind of stuff okay, in the rice okay. cooker yeah, because yeah. I believe it's one temperature setting that mm-hmm. it has or it's it's literally a, a switch that you yeah. flick. So I like rice cookers. I'm an advocate for them. I think when you're learning to cook or just generally if you are just as a life skill, you should be able to do these things without these appliances and then once you've been able to master that go and get a rice cooker and save yourself some hassle and every every once in a while cook Mm. it on the stove just to make sure you don't lose the you don't lose the skill do you know what i mean but i think i think they're great because why am i standing over this pot of rice you put it on it's done it switches off when it's done it steams it does the whole shebang for you yeah and it's great i did so lopez recipe in her book is actually Mm -hmm. for steamed rice in a rice cooker? No, no, no. It's just oh. like to steam your rice. So she says you can obviously do it in a sieve over a pan if you want. Mm-hmm. But when I lived at home, we had a steamer, like an actual steamer, like a three tier. Oh, steamer. wait a minute. So she's not cooking submerged in water. The rice grains are being steamed. Yeah. What? I got to check. I've got the book at home. I need yeah, to yeah, double yeah. check that. I don't know if it's steamed. So I did. I used to do it in the steamer. So like the everything would be an even layer of yeah. rice, and then every now and then I would just kind of toss it up. How long does that take to cook? Um, 
I'll have to check. I'll, ch- I'll check the recipe, but I liked it because as a concept to me, and as you said, an appliance of ease when I'm cooking, these are like my uni days kind mm. of things. That's fine. Jollof on the bottom one, fish on the top one, vegetables above that. Mm-hmm. I can add the tears as I need them. One thing, everything cooked. Yeah. So this is the raw grains of rice, hard grains of rice sitting on top of steam. Yes. And that's how it cooks. Yeah. And it's already jollof Oh, okay. So you've made the jollof sauce. And Stew then you, in the pan. Yeah. Run the rice through, but not like for long, not to cook yeah, it in yeah, any yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to mix and then, it up. Yeah, because so you almost end up with like, Imagine the consistency of like um, tomato puree yeah. full of rice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the only thing is that I ruined the rice. I, I ruined the color of the rice yeah, because it, it drips stains. through. But it's whatever. It's the base of the rice. Uh-huh. Um, and then yeah, you just make a layer of it, and it's then it's cooked. Interesting. I've got to try. I've never cooked rice like that in my life. And then since I've been here, um, not at my parents' house, I've done her method in the sieve, but the sieve doesn't do it as well because the sieve is shaped like this. Yeah. So like a triangle. Sorry, if anyone can't see me. Um. So to distribute the rice evenly to yeah, cook is yeah. a bit more of a hassle. So I wouldn't do it like that again. I would get a, an even, an even layer. Um. But yeah, really, really. What do you think is the the benefit of that? Um. She, I think in her forward or whatever you call it, that mm-hmm. paragraph top of the page, she says you can't burn rice like this. Okay. Well, I, yeah, that's fair <laughs> enough. But <laughs> I, I imagine it takes a bit longer or not necessarily. Um, It does. But like I said, for me at that, po- at that point of my life and learning, yeah, uh, time of cooking is not something that hmm. I was really worried about. Like I was worried about burning food, mm. wasting food, not being, not eating that day. And to know that the ease of it, I'm sitting at the table. Oh, okay. Time has gone off. Get up and put the fish on yeah, top. Yeah. Time has gone off in 10 more minutes. Get off and put the vegetable layer on top. Sit back down. 10 more minutes. Ding, ding, ding. Everything's cooked. Gosh. I'm, do you know my mind is blown? <laughs> really? Yeah, because I'll I'll just, I just picture. never knew you could cook. Like, I just would have never considered steaming rice grains but like that. See, there's literally also, there's like steamed rice in terms of you can wrap rice, yeah. wrap raw rice in a banana leaf yeah, and then yeah. that whole thing, you can just bury underground. I know. The, the, the rice is steamed. When I've had like rice wrapped in a banana leaf yeah. and stuff, but like rice in a steamer, yeah. I just didn't, just didn't think about it. Interesting. I might try it one day. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I'll, we'll run through the recipe. I've got the book here. Yeah. Um, we can have a little look. But yeah, steamed rice. Okay. And it's steamed jollof rice. Oh, nice. Someone right now is screaming, ah, yeah, ah. impossible. Yeah, yeah. I will share that book um linked in the, the notes of this episode. So we're not anti rice cooker, we're not anti steamer, we're not anti anything. No, Asian people eat a lot of like East Asian people mm. as well eat a lot of rice and like plain rice, mm. and they swear up and down by rice cookers. They think they're absolutely great. It, it cooks perfect rice in their yeah. eyes. So. We had a conversation which is available on cinematop.com and also linked below about food hygiene mm-hmm. and we've had a fair few conversations about reheating rice and <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. So we won't touch on that again now, but just know you should do it very well. Heat yeah. the rice through so it's hot, 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 hot. the so number one source of food poisoning. Number one source so. of food poisoning and all the other reasons are in that episode and you can go and listen to that, check it out. So we're aware that we haven't spoken about everything to do with rice. We've touched on rice in previous episodes and this mm. was a deep dive into some elements of rice. But we'll put it out to you. We'll put a poll on this episode if you're listening to it on Spotify and we'll also share them over on Instagram. What more do you want to hear us talk about rice? Because we could talk about rice yeah, there's 40,000 varieties. Not there's just... multiple different dishes and ways that you can cook rice. Different cultures <laughs> eat rice in different ways. And all of the different products that are made using rice, like rice milk, yeah. rice noodles, rice paper wrappers, rice crisps. Right. <laughs> if you want to have another conversation about rice, not necessarily next, but a little bit down the line, let us know in that box. DM us, find us over on x.com. Yeah, yeah. Um, let us know your thoughts and opinions of this episode and where we can take it next. Let us know your favorite cultural, whether it's your own culture or someone yeah. else's culture, rice dish that you absolutely love, your favorite type of rice. Just just chat rice. Yeah, favorite rice recipe. Yeah. Mm. And what times now as an adult have you realized that there is rice at home? Like where yeah. where have you been at the <laughs> gates of the golden arches and been like, what am I doing? There's rice at home. Because I feel like that's the point of our life yeah. that we're at now. Like, yeah. There is actually rice at home. I have to check myself sometimes mm. that you've got food in your house and we are Go eating home. everything in yeah. this house rice one, one thing i will say about rice is it's very reliable staple mm. very reliable staple and because it's it can last for so long i've had bags of rice which i haven't looked at in months and then i've gone back and it's perfectly fine. It's mm. in date, and it's good to go. Mm. Like it's, it's like pasta almost. Mm. I guess so. Like dried pasta, that is not fresh pasta. Yeah, so, yeah. Worst well, comes to worst, you can always make rice and beans. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they feed them in I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out for Jungle. That's all they give yeah. them every day is rice and beans. Yeah. Because that's what protein and, and uh, carbs. Yeah, mm. pretty much. That's what they need to do their tasks. Yeah. But thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, if you have enjoyed this episode and love this podcast, to rate and review us. And we will catch you next time.